Good morning, Willie Briscoe, Hope Leadership Academy, and part of the family of North Coast Calvary Chapel. Um, looking forward to sharing with you from Mark 834 this morning. And um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some red letters that Jesus spoke to not only his disciples, but also to the crowd that had gathered after he had just done several uh, miracles. He had fed the 4,000. He'd also healed a blind man and did some other miracles. And so the crowds were growing and people were hanging on to him and they were wanting to be kind of part of the excitement at that time. But Jesus is going to kind of pierce their hearts with uh, this verse and he's going to split up the different type of relationships that um, uh, Jesus sees in us. Even today, he's going to show us some requirements of what it really means to be his disciple. So let's read that in Mark 8, 34. Said, then he, Jesus, called the crowd to himself along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up their cross and follow me. So in this short verse, Jesus calls us to three very, very difficult things. And the first is to deny ourselves. And um, it is not natural to a man or a woman or a child, if you have children, you know this, to deny ourselves. It is not natural to, um, to set something aside that we want and what we want to do and what we want for our life and, and how we want things to be to create the comfort in the way that we want to live. It is not natural for us to set that aside and to um, take a more difficult, challenging and un. Uh, paved road in order to um, to help others or in order to grow spiritually or to mature spiritually. And so it's not not natural for a man to want to do that. Um, we're naturally bent towards um, comfort and ease and um, just the easier way. But this first step that Jesus calls us into to be his disciple, it's a very difficult step. And it's not just a one-time thing. It's a daily way of life that Jesus lived that life. He came in a manger and he lived a humble life. And then he even died in a more humble and humiliating way. Um, so in order to deny ourselves, um, to be his disciple, Jesus is not forcing us to be his disciple. He's not forcing us to to follow these three uh, requirements of what it re calls, uh, requires to be a disciple. But... He loves us where we're at. But yet, if you want to be a disciple, if I want to be a disciple, he calls us to deny ourselves first. And secondly, he calls us to uh, pick up our cross. Um, and what does that mean? To pick up the cross, to, to um, lay aside our own ambitions, desires, our, um, the things that uh, make us weak, our, our, our failures, all those things that um, that we, that make us who we are. Um, we're, we're being called to carry that. And Jesus would literally physically carry his cross. He would carry that cross in a literal term as an example of what God is calling us to do, um, to carry our own cross. And then the last part of that is what he calls us to do is to follow him. And while that may seem, um, like the easiest, it's probably the most difficult because Jesus would, would often tell about how difficult it is to follow him. Um, he would say, I have no place to sleep. I have no place to rest my head. Um, I go where the father tells me to go. And we know by this example, this requirements that that road is not easy. He would ultimately go to the cross. He would ultimately die. He would ultimately lay down his life for mankind. And so he's calling us to do that same thing, to, to walk in that um, light and in, in the way that he walked and he was teaching his disciples. And I think the reason he was uh, being so blatant about teaching his disciples is because of the excitement and uh, all of the um, the commotion about all the miracles and the hoopla of what Jesus was doing. And he was bringing it back down to the seriousness of what it means to follow him. And I think we can make a mistake like that, even in sharing Christ with people or leading people to Christ, we, we generally talk about how good it is to come to Christ. And we fail to mention these other um, difficult parts of following Christ and, and leave people dismayed when they run into issues or they run into failures or they run into God doing something different than what they thought he would do. 
and I, I believe that this is, is preaching the whole gospel when you share with someone and you share with them like what it really means to follow him. And yet at the same time, I believe that, and God, Jesus would say it here, we'll read another verse here in a second, but I believe that there is nothing that you could give up in this lifetime or nothing you could sacrifice or no pain that you can go through that God would not multiply a million times over in eternity and in this life that we live today if you do it for his sake. And so it's while it's a difficult, narrow road and a small door that we can come into, that we need to come into to be his disciple, I think it opens up into a very beautiful uh, story that God wants to tell in, a, in, in our lives as being one of his disciples. And just to round this off to see how good it is, we'll, we'll read verse 35. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. And then 36, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with his holy angels. And so um, Jesus is juxtaposing just the life of following him, of sacrifice and carrying our cross and humbling ourselves as opposed to living the life that we want that just focus on ourselves. And he's saying the first is, is a way better choice to um, lay down our lives, to um, humble ourselves and follow him and to carry our cross. And, um, and that's what his desire is. I think regardless of where you're at today, where I'm at today, I think his desire is that we all would reach that level of being his disciple, that we wouldn't just be a garden variety Christian that would um, just want to be around Jesus for the hype. So as we end this year, um, so time to make New Year's resolutions. Maybe um, one of your re re revolution or resolutions could be that you can um, draw closer to Jesus and, and to be one of his disciples. Have a great day and Happy New Year and Merry Christmas.